Yeah. Why was sorry? Why have you? I haven't bought a truck, so I don't know this procedure. But how do you know you want to buy the truck? Oh, the t- ah, <laughs> the truck. Oh, I've become, I'm trying to get it all out of my head, Max. I'm trying to forget all of that. <sighs> I actually, though, you know what? We were with our investor yesterday, last night. Uh, he he opened a hotel. You know the Felton Hall. Felton, the Felton Hall. Is it Felton? No, yeah, no, not Felton. What's it called? Felton means a shit hole. Yes. Not not Felton. Uh, I can't say shit hole, Max. On this, this is a family podcast. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's called the something. So, anyway, it's, it's a it's a hotel. It's a four star hotel up here somewhere. The whole corporate events. But anyway, he they redid it, and I went up there yesterday uh, with with Lily. Went out, which basically went for the free food. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And we had, uh, they were all there, a couple hundred people. Um, what's the name of it? Elv- Elvatham. Elvatham? Elvatham something. Elvatham, Elvatham Heath. Elvatham Heath or Elvatham Hall. Hotel. But that's in Fleet. Yeah, it's in Fleet. Yeah. It's ah. literally just down the road. Yeah, they bought it a few years ago. And, and uh, so anyway, hey, we're live streaming. So uh, we're going to be, hey, welcome back from holiday, Max. And uh, we're going to be talking about, um, actually, we're going to be talking about what beans to buy because, and I tell you, there's this backstory to this, because not everybody is a coffee expert. Not everybody you know, has been doing this for a number of years. A number of people, more than one, uh, I've got on, um, on good advice. Yeah, uh, at least recent, two. Two, maybe more, have got a, have recently got a machine and they're and they're thinking to themselves like how do i actually choose where to you know what beans to buy do i just pop down to the supermarket do i go somewhere else you know where, where do i start with this and the reason i know this is because we had a winner <laughs> for all the equipment Aha. That, we were, that we were getting that we were that we were that we were getting rid of last uh last month. <laughs> getting rid of wow I, I started to say that and i thought oh back out of that nick that sounds terrible <laughs> i couldn't think of another thing to say yeah there's no, someone that, that won winner. all the junk that we we're trying to, <laughs> to offload <laughs> i i i just moved house i didn't know no it's not true at all i bought it new it's all brand new uh but the the, the water filter it. no i haven't used it uh much uh, no i haven't used it at all <laughs> So, so we got all this, we got all this, all these good, this goodie bag that we're giving away. And uh, so I spun the wheel. Um, although I did have a good idea that we could stick sticky notes on you and then we could blindfold me, spin me around, like I could throw darts and like we just have the names, the different people. And um, I don't know if you'd be up for that. We can talk about that later. But anyway. Yeah, so we... yeah t- totally. Yes. Uh, but remotely. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I can set up a machine to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, so anyway, so the, 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 we, the winner was a, was a, a gentleman called mm-hmm. Ben Gibbs. So I contacted Ben and I said, you got all this stuff. And he went, ah, oh, it's amazing. I said, just confirm you're in the UK. And he went, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually no. Yeah, no, I'm not. Um, so he's in the U S so what I'm going to do for Ben is we're going to, we're going to buy him some, some beans. I said, look, I'll tell you what, I can't, you, can you send it over? I said, no. By the time I send it over, mate, I'll just buy another one over there, buy everything again twice, because uh, it'll be so expensive. You have yeah. no idea. Um, oh, so, I do. So, so I said, I'll just look up. I'll, I'll buy you some beans, because that's what we normally do anyway. I'll buy some beans in America. He said, that'd be great, because I've only just had my Gagia Classic Pro for six months. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm still working out, like, what beans to get. That gave me the idea. You know, there's probably a lot of people. It's not just Ben. He's not alone in the US. He's not the only one there who's thinking this same thing. So, yeah. So what we're going to do is actually talk through that process because actually Ben and others, uh, this is about the most fun part of the whole game <laughs> to me anyway. Mm-hmm. Right? Choosing the beans, where you go, what kind of things you get. It's where the fun's at. Yes. For me. No, it no, is for me. For me, when, when you drink it. No, that's that's after that's, you're drinking and you're all the white up. That's like saying that's like saying the destination is the fun part of the journey. Yes, the journey's got to be fun. The journey's got to be fun. The destination's just the cherry on the top, my friend. See, that's why you have a shiny machine, and that's why I don't. <laughs> uh yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Maybe there's different things to different people. But anyway, there's a lot of pleasure to be had in discovering new flavors. You see, you don't even get to the flavor unless you start thinking about. Where are you going to buy your beans? What's the difference between different beans and so forth? So, 
this is going to be uh it's not going to be a massively long i hope hopefully not a massively long hopefully podcast. not uh but we're going to go through just the the basic things you want to check off uh to get you started get the ball rolling and how you actually pick the, the kind of good beans to start with mm-hmm. so mac do you want to do you want to do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? I would, um, I would go first, of course. Of course you would. Of course I would. Um, so for me, if if it's the first time that you start, you start, you're starting to get to grips with your machine. You don't, first of all, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money. I think that's so, important. Shall, shall I record this? I think you should. <laughs> Otherwise, we're not going to have a podcast to uh, to put out. Oh right, God! I'll, could you start again, please, Max? Yes. So anyway, so when buying, so when buying <laughs> beans, yeah, and you're a start, and you're starting up, it's your first time. You have a first coffee machine. You're starting to to get beans and uh, all that jazz, and uh, a lot of other fun stuff we said, but we we haven't recorded, so it's it's all gone. You've lost it. I'm sorry. It's all it's all Nick's fault anyway. Well, it'll be on the live stream. The live stream gets stuck on the YouTube as well. So you go back to the live stream. So you you know what what Nick has done to you to you in particular. <laughs> and um, so, I wouldn't want to spend a lot of money to start with, because if you're starting out, you want to learn the basics, and you don't want it to be expensive. Why do you want to get a, a bag of beans that costs you fifteen pounds or whatever dollars? It's you, every time that you make a mistake, it's going to be an expensive mistake. You're probably going to have to work out your basics uh, and your, you know, your flow, your, your workflow, and everything. Why do you want to waste money? So I personally would get a few. Would get I would like to get through a few tins of good um, supermarket brand coffee. Me. I would go for the Illy just because I'm Italian. I like it. It's actually a very good coffee when you get it because it's uh, packed under under vacuum or um, I'm not sure it's vacuum. Actually, it's not vacuum. It's Probably under nitrogen. nitrogen. Yes, it's under um, protective atmosphere. So it's under nitrogen, which means that it's, it's going to keep better than it would if it was in a bag with a vent for months and months. So I would get something like that until you start getting good coffee consistently. Then you can start exploring different coffee beans and different, different beans and different roasters and all the specialty coffee you, you want after you have your basics down. Great, great advice, Max. I completely disagree. And, uh, <laughs> I don't completely disagree. I come at it from a different point of view. Um, but it's interesting that we, we've both got the same ideas, but I'm going to come at it differently. Uh, I'm sure Massimiliano Pogliano will be very happy to hear you to say that it recommends Illy Beans. If you haven't seen our interview with the CEO of Illy, then go check out our, somewhere else on our channel. Look it up there. It's all right. I mean, I, um, you can, um, you, Max, you can send me the check anywhere. <laughs> So, so, but that, that in, in that conversation, we talk more about the, uh, the ESG and and uh, and sustainability um, behind Ely Coffee. But my approach is actually is actually kind of different. Like your your approach makes total sense. Um, yes, it does. But like most things in in the way I followed my life, I, I don't take the sensible route. Uh, I'm excited. I spent a lot of money on some equipment, and I'm not going to be worried necessarily about now. You know, having spent all this money about doing the sensible thing and going to buy you know, supermarket beans. But let's be very clear for a second. When we say supermarket beans, it's not a derogatory term. There's actually two separations of, um, well, at least it, it, well, what you'll be drinking, hopefully, there's going to be only two different kinds of grades, as it were, of, of beans. Those which are termed speciality or specialty for our, our American friends, and those which are called commercial. So commercial grade, and, and when you talk about grades, it varies the depending upon what part of the world you're in, but certainly in the West, we have, I think, a pretty much agreed um, standard for how beans are graded, and it's graded on size and quality, number of defects, and, and then eventually they get tasted through a process called cupping and, and, a, and attributed a score. So when you go for anything that's specialty or speciality coffee, um, what it's really saying is it's really saying that these are at a certain standard 
quality, um, certain standard of flavor, certain standard of quality. Commercial grade beans um, can have more defects, uh, maybe, um, and maybe don't have as much flavor or maybe wouldn't have the same flavor consistency as a specialty coffee. And so they can be sold a lot cheaper. And that's why you go into supermarket and you'll see such huge price variances between these two. You go and get you know, a pack of your local supermarket coffee and you're like, wow, that's so much cheaper. Why would I pay you know, five times the price for, that, for those beans over there? And the answer it comes down to, and this is where Max was going really with it, was it comes down to, yeah, but those are a much better class of quality of coffee. But if you don't know how to extract that flavor, then, then kind of what's the point? But I would say there's a, I'd say there's a, there's a kind of a but to that. And, and that is that um, I certainly found that part of my learning experience was 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 trying to tackle the slightly more difficult coffees. Now, if it's literally your first week of trying to use a machine, then okay, sure, go down, get yourself a nice bag or can of Illy coffee, um, and and work your way through that. But once you've, I mean, Ben's had his had his machine for for six months. Mm -hmm. I'm going to presume that he knows how to use that machine, that he's getting some kind of consistent results, or he's getting some kind of results out right now. And he's ready to move on maybe to the next stage of his journey where he's like, you know what, I'd, I'd really like to see what this machine can do, what I can get out of it. So they'd probably be on a separate video, maybe then we'll do another thing about how you'd set, set up your machine and kind of things to do and, you know, making sure that you've got that consistency. With the Gaggio, it would be probably, you know, swapping out the, the OPV to, to a nine bar um, a system, mm -hmm. but also just doing basic things like cleaning uh, and, and looking at your grinder that you've got, um, those sorts of things. But when it comes down to beans, what I would say is, is a couple of things. First of all, if you spent all that money, be prepared to spend more money. You, you have to. You, I, I don't think you can learn how to make specialty coffee cheap. I think there, yeah. you, there, is, there, you, there is a cost attached. There's a price tag for that. So the, the first thing I do is say, understand the difference between specialty coffee and commercial grade coffee. You can always, as a, like if you do nothing else, you can always get better results by going to an independent roaster. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you just, if the one thing that you do is instead of getting your coffee at the supermarket, go to an independent roaster um, and buy your, and buy your, your beans there, you're kind of almost guaranteed, almost guaranteed, almost, almost guaranteed to get better results. Um, so the first thing I would do is just go online and look up, you know, in your area, if you're in Denver, Colorado, look up Denver, Colorado, you know, coffee roaster, and you will yeah. find that you will have a lot. And yeah, there's, a, the there's a bazillion a everywhere in the U.S. I mean, in the U.S., I think there's more roasters than, uh, than coffee shops. Yeah, probably. There's a lot. There's a, there's a huge, huge ecosystem of roasters. And frankly, the same is true here, Max. I don't know. I haven't seen as many. But well, okay, we're a smaller country, but I'm saying you know, if you take a look per capita, I bet you we've got something in uh, a million miles away. Okay. We've got a lot, mate. Yeah, you will never run out. We'll never run out. Uh, so that's my second thing. I would say, or my first thing, I would say, understand that it has to be commercial and speciality coffee, buy from an independent roaster. Mm. Try the beans. If you can, buy locally, go to the, to the roaster and have a coffee. Try. Yeah, the roasters will let you in. Unless they and like you. so you know, you know what it's going to taste like because one of the things we do, which is sometimes a little frustrating because you always end up wondering, mm, did I get it right? Can, can I do it differently? Can I, should, I do, should, should it taste differently? I don't know the benchmark. I don't have the benchmark because I'm I'm doing it my, on my own here. The roaster has, is doing it on his own somewhere else, and we haven't compared data, so I don't know how it should taste. So it's a great idea. So go down to your local roaster, pop in, and then see. And also, they'll give you all sorts of tips as well. Mm -hmm. And or if you go to uh, if you have coffee at a coffee shop, you can. Either buy the beans from them, which is an option, or ask them where where do where do you get your beans? They're and gonna tell you. We'll get them from a local roaster. Yeah, and most likely they're gonna tell you that it's not like they're gonna lose business anyway. No, 
No, they'll tell you. Um, I was down visiting my son for, uh, for lunch a couple of weeks ago. And we walked around different coffee shops. I'm like, hey, where do you, where do you get your beans from? And they're all roasters that I knew in the area. Yeah, that's a really good tip. But, but one thing I would say is don't expect to get the same results. No, that's, yeah. I mean, it'll give you a guideline, but, but, but you won't get the same result. Don't get frustrated because you're not going to get that same result as he's getting on his 10,000 pound machine with a speciality water, water filter system attached, you know, and 2,000 pound grinders, pounds being, you know, money pounds, not, not weight. Um, so also wait in some also possibly wait so so you're not going to get the same results but it will give you an idea of what you like which kind of brings me on to my next thing which is that understand that geographic region makes a difference and i think one of the first things that and kind of this starts to get for me exciting is to understand where the coffee has come from where it's originated from because mm -hmm. uh you know generally because we're looking down by the equator and and, and you, you've got you've got quite a long belt of South American coffee, Central mm -hmm. American coffee. Um, so you could, you could start there. You could start with, I mean, Brazil's the biggest uh, coffee producer in the world. I'm not sure if they still are. Maybe Colombia is, but Brazil and Colombia both. Um, they taste different in mm -hmm. those regions. Uh, then you've got Guatemala, Costa Rica. You've got all down there. You've got tons. Dominican of Republic, if you can get a hold of it. Dominican Republic, yeah, and then you go out to. It's more rare than you, than a unicorn tier, but. Yeah, well, it's like getting coffee beans from Myanmar or Burma at the moment, um, which I'm trying to do. Um, so, so uh, Africa, that could be a place you might want to start there. I mean, obviously Ethiopia is is the common <coughs> understood as the the birthplace of coffee. I am so. Uh, you've got Ethiopia, you've got Kenya, Guatemala, Tanzania, Uganda, all of those produce coffees. And when you talk about, so I, I would just say, it could almost just start with the country and just say, get me an Ethiopian, because I won't say all Ethiopians taste the same. That's not true. But there's a kind of a... Kind you of can a sort of mark. tell. You can kind of tell an Ethiopian, right? Yeah, and they're normally very... Brazilian and they're Colombian. normally very very like which mm -hmm. i don't like <laughs> it's it's very normally popular. nick's favorite very yeah popular well yeah. you know what okay now you go next max and i'll pick up my next one yeah i normally prefer the ones from uh, central uh, central america yeah so because they tend to be more kind of uh, brown notes like chocolates and uh, nut which i i normally prefer in a coffee mm-hmm well, yeah, then I, I wouldn't know where else to go after these. I mean, just well, go and explore, <laughs> change well, temperatures, say, change things. But that that goes into the technique, not really into into, into the, the fine bean beans. Well, okay, when you get a little bit more, so I, I, there's probably something worth clarifying when we talk about countries as well, because people may get confused by some of the terminology. So let's just clarify some of the terminology here. Um, for example, people talk big about single origin. I've got a single origin Ethiopian doesn't actually mean a lot um, to me. Uh, so single estate does. Single origin means it's come from one country, mm -hmm. but it's probably been grouped together with lots of different beans from lots of different farms. So kind of it's, it, it sort of doesn't actually mean a huge deal. Um, yeah. From year to year is going to change. From season to season is going to change. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so the second thing, though, is to understand single estate. And now what happens is some roasters, uh, Carvetti, I know, did this recently mm -hmm. in the UK, um, will, will work with a farmer. And they'll get very, very close with that farmer. They'll, um, they'll maybe even talk to him about you know, um, uh, good, um, good agricultural practices and getting you know, better yields and getting better quality. Um, and so they may well have a very tight relationship with that, with that, with that farmer. And then they may actually finance that farmer um, and, and finance. Uh, I was just working with a, God, who was it? It's a big roast, the West, West, uh, West something coffee. West, it's a big, uh, big coffee chain in West Coast, maybe it is, in America. I don't know. Um, and they sell their coffees through, through King Super and Walmart and, and everything else. Anyway. 
um, they do a lot of pre and finance packages as part of their sort of ESG things where they'll work closely with the farmers. They'll actually finance the farmers um, crops ahead of time so that so that um, yeah, so that, that everything's managed properly. Then they'll buy them at an agreed price, make sure the farmers well taken care of um, and do it that way. But but that is a single estate. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes when you're when you're buying coffee through um, through that kind of direct relationship, that roaster knows that coffee intimately. And that can be an interesting experience. That can be a very interesting uh, experience. Um, so I would say understand the difference between single origin and single estate. Read the roaster's webpage because more and more of them now talk about uh, how they source their coffee, um, the relationship they have. If and, and this is all because of us, because we started raving about it and uh, obviously everyone responded to that. It's, it's all us. It's all us. Uh, yeah. that, that, that's the reason for that. But what that means to you, because what you're ultimately interested in at the end of the day is, is whether you're getting great coffee. And, um, and uh, if, if somebody is just buying their beans from a trader and then just roasting them the best that they can, that's, I mean, that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if alternatively someone is actually maybe even visiting the farms, working with the farmer, getting, you know, samples, you know, how they sample roast that really working closely with them, then you can sometimes get something very special. So I'd bear bear that in mind. Um, And and then finally, I think from in terms of terminology, the other thing I would look at, and this would be after you've done all those things. So once you've done all of that, so you you tried a, a Kenyan, you tried something from Uganda, you tried something from Rwanda, something from Colombia, and you start to get a feel for, as Max was saying, you know, you go to Central America, to, to Nicaragua or wherever, and you get some coffees from there, and you've got these kind of chocolatey, nutty, which if you're into espresso, makes, makes a, you know, that's kind of maybe a very popular flavor profile that you're interested in. Then, uh, and you go to Africa, and it's maybe a little bit more fruity, a little bit more acidic. Um, you can decide which one you want, hone in on that region, try more and more things. Then the next stage, the next step up in development is understanding the difference between washed uh, honey processed and naturals. If you really like the kind of, I don't know, fruity, uh, the fruity flavors, try natural. Because mm-hmm. I love naturals, I have to say. I, when they've been done well, I love a natural because the amount of, uh, you know, the amount of flavor you can get out of a natural is, 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 um, is something else. So, so that would be the next thing I would do. Yeah, no. <laughs> not for you max well you know no. what that actually that actually says it all because this is the other thing i think it took me a long time to to come to realize is i was looking for for where you know what what i, I guess i hadn't established my own like what was right or wrong in my own head mm-hmm. and i was always looking for someone else to tell me hey this is a good one this isn't a good one and actually that's kind of I mean, you know, you can get good and bad quality, but what you like is up to you. That that's totally your bag, right? Exactly. So, so you can't. Nobody can tell you that this coffee from Irgoshef in in Ethiopia is good or bad. That that's up to you to decide. You know, mm-hmm. if you like it, fantastic. Uh, my my. If you don't like it, you just wasted the bag. <laughs> you just wasted the bag. And, and, you know, that's the other thing, you know, you're talking about, we're going back to the, the money question earlier. Um, I would say, you know, once you've got a feel for something, I, I tend to buy, I tend to buy things in 250 gram bags first. Mm-hmm. If I've got an idea that I might like it, I'll immediately go back and buy either 500 grams or a kilo. And the reason being that in 250 grams, you're just about getting it dialed in. If you're lucky for me, maybe I take longer. No, I think you can, you can get it dialed in earlier than that, but yeah, if there is some fine tuning to do, if you want to change temperatures and start playing around with things. Yeah. Yeah. Look, okay. If you're, if you're also, if you're starting out and you're not as experienced as you, Max, um, then it might take, it might take you 250 grams to get through to get it kind of like to a point where you've made a few good shots, and, yeah, and then um, and by then you go like, "Ooh, this is this was really good." Oh, really crap. good. Oh, there's no more left. <laughs> um, so I would say definitely do consider buying bigger bags. 
they'll also be a little bit more cost effective. Uh, and then once after you know you like it, because otherwise it's a very long process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's one other tip I've got actually. This is, this is a bit of a sneaky tip, which is if you're in a household, actually, we should talk about whether milk's added or not. Because if, you, if you're in a household and you've got some people drink coffee with milk, some people drink coffee without milk, um, you, you know, do bear in mind that you can have coffee that doesn't taste great without milk. That can yeah, for taste it doesn't taste milk. great, you mean it tastes awful. With me. No, no, I, I know, I know that, that too. That too. Th there are I'm some saying. coffees where that you, you think, oh, I'm going to have to put some milk in it. And suddenly it's the biggest mistake of your life. Then. Yeah, it goes both ways, right? Yeah, it can ruin your day. <laughs> yeah, it goes both ways. But the thing is, what I'm trying to say is that that um, coffee, if you're making your, if you're always making your coffee with milk, bear in mind that someone else who says, oh, this is an amazing coffee, may not drinking it with milk it, it, it completely changes the game mm -hmm. so some coffee tastes amazing with milk and some coffee doesn't um and uh so just bear that in mind also and this is a trick i learned a little while back is um is when you're if you're using a grinder i said like obviously you're going to use a grinder <laughs> yeah i mean that's where you're going wrong do not put the beans straight in the porter filter that's your first mistake yeah that, that might be a little too fast <laughs> I've actually done that a few times in the morning very early. And I like putting up and now I've literally put beans straight into the porter filter and I've started to put it in. I think, wait a minute, I missed the step. You can't be serious. I've I've done it twice. Wow. I've got my mind somewhere else. It's 4 a.m. You know, what can I tell you? That's why I need the <laughs> coffee. Um <laughs> well, the, the, I put the, every, look my son had the hand grinder he forgot to put the bottom on it he spent the whole time grinding it, it went all over the floor i'm just saying it runs in the family so anyway you can always get a handful of beans and just you could do that well you yeah you put them in your mouth just chew them a little them. and then put, put some hot water in done yeah. coffee done yeah and so listen and... listen the tip oh you what what yeah then no, no, go, go ahead no okay the tip is this so if you're using a grinder uh, like an electric grinder, mm -hmm. um, the chances are it's going to have some retention. So when you come down first thing in the morning, the trick is if there's a milk drinker, somebody who drinks coffee with milk, I should say. That's the first coffee that goes out. You give them the first coffee. Because <laughs> <laughs> they won't notice. You just cover it all up with that milk. And because uh, it's going to taste kind of bad. It actually will taste pretty bad. That first coffee out, it's all going to be all those stale grinds from the day before. So the bottom line is, if you guys drink dr drink coffee with milk, you deserve to, to have crap coffee. <laughs> no, you don't. Nick Basket. No, you don't. I still love 2021. Flat whites. No, look, before I stopped drinking milk, I used to love flat whites and, and macchiatos. Uh, they got no problem with those. But you couldn't but they, tell why it was always tasting. That, they always had that little awful aftertaste. Now you know. always did. Now I do. Now, now you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, some of the best flat whites I had when I was drinking with milk were Ethiopians, Ethiopian base with, uh, with milk on top. Oh yeah. Oh no, they were, they were delicious. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. So definitely give yeah. that a try. Uh, so that'll about wrap it up. What I want to say, um, actually, Max is, uh, actually what I do want to say, I'm going to show a couple of copies that we're drinking here as an example. Mm -hmm. pull over. I've got a couple of interesting ones here. I've got a new race that I'm working with as well. Um, first of all, this is oh. a new one from, not a new one, it's a new one for me. From it's a new one from you. I mean, I had that for ages. I know, years ago, right? Okay, yeah, but for me, I hadn't had this. And then Adrian came. Oh, Adrian came and he plugged uh -huh. in my machine. Oh, he so did? I, yeah, I'm all plumbed in now. Wow. And, and check this out. Listen to this. Uh, he came and he tested the water because I had a water filter put on to, to soften the mm -hmm. water um, for all of the equipment around mm -hmm. the house. And it was too soft. No, it's too hard still. He said it's way too, he showed me it's still way too hard. Wow. Um, but he also then, he went and he had that tested and it has stripped out a lot of the chemicals. So that water softener had also stripped out all the chemicals, all the coffee flavors were very dull. So they calibrated a, um, it wasn't a the Brita they used in the end, it was something else. Like the, you know, when I say Brita, I don't mean like the jug. I mean, like they make speciality. Ion exchange resin. Of course, that's what I was going to say. And it's about uh -huh. that 
it's about that big and it goes yeah. under my sink and it's mm -hmm. plugged in. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Beautiful flavors. So I'm trying this, uh, or I've had this Sultan's from Peabury. I really like it. I love the mouthfeel for this. Uh -huh. how, thick, that, how thick and creamy it is. In the that's really nice. Really good. Um, Have you tried it as a pour over that? I don't do pour overs anymore. I just you should do a pour over with that one. It's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get some more of it. This is a new company. They've been roasting only for two years. I've tried about five of their coffees uh, now. They're called Carnival Roasters in the UK. Mm -hmm. I've tried about five of their coffees um, and I haven't, no, I haven't liked all of them. I liked all of them. Some of them were like, eh, this one's really interesting because let me read the flavors to you. Uh, actually, no, sorry. It's not that one. That's a Nicaraguan one. I got the wrong one. I can't remember the one I got. Oh yeah. I don't have the bag for the one I got. The one <laughs> I got is called La, La, La Negra de something or other. Look that up. La Perla Negra. Yes. That's what, how do you know that? I checked your Facebook. Oh. I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I posted about it this morning. La Perla <laughs> Negra. I thank God you're here to tell me what I say, Max. Um, <laughs> at that, I've been, I've been using Max, it. scientist, coffee expert, and secretary, everything. <laughs> Roll into one. Uh, I get very good value for money, Max. Um, and uh, so, so anyway, so Carnival Roasters, that La Perla Negra, that has a very interesting flavor profile. I don't know where it comes from. It's not Nicaragua. I don't, I'm not sure it comes from it. Maybe a blend, but it's got um, it's got an aftertaste of aniseed. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no, no, it's very pleasant. It's very pleasant. Oh, that that would be so wrong for me. Me, I had an accident with with sambuca many yeah. years ago. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, yeah. it's not. I, I don't think it'll bring no. it back. No. Like that time I got so drunk on uh, on peppermint schnapps, uh, I passed out in someone's cupboard, uh, and I couldn't get out because I was upside down. I fell over backwards at the party, and uh, <laughs> anyway, I couldn't get out because I was upside down. And someone pulled me out in the morning, and uh, and when I went to brush my teeth, I was I was sick because the mint. I couldn't have mint <laughs> for two weeks. I could even brushing my teeth was 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 a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> uh that's why i don't drink anymore so um <laughs> that's why you don't use mints anymore <laughs> yeah that's why i don't brush my teeth anymore uh, so <laughs> listen this other one this other one yes carnival has been a real surprise for me it's decaf it uses uh i'm pretty sure they use a swiss was it them or somebody else I hmm, can't remember that. Anyway, I don't remember they use the Swiss water method for decafing. Uh, I think they do. But this decaf, mm -hmm. wow. Really juicy. Maybe not for you because it's juicy and fruity. Um, they're, they describe mm. their tasting notes as dark chocolate, apricot, and sweet mandarin. Mm. So, um, and wow. Really, really good. Uh, so if you're in the UK, I do recommend um, giving the Plus, they're, they're a lot of fun. You know, they're fun. They're nice people. When we go Probably, years, so they, they look fun. The, the bags look fun. Yeah, they're, they're really nice. I always send a little note and they send me an email. And um, yeah, I really like them. So I'm uh, going to be recommending them going forward. I'm going to try some more. I've got a couple. I'm basically taking my own advice. I bought from them. Oh, this is something else that you can look out for from roasters. Because this is what I did with Carnival. Is they sometimes have a, an ex an explore pack or a discovery pack mm -hmm. where you, they'll like to sell you four coffees at a discount. So I got four bags, 230 grams each at a good price. And it allowed me to, to explore a bunch of different. And from that, I could say, yeah, I'm not too keen on that one. Yeah, that one's okay. Oh, that one's really nice. And now I'm went and bought a couple of kilos of, um, of the stuff I like. Yeah. Uh -huh. There it is. There it is. So good old Peaberry and uh, and Carnival is what I've been drinking this last month. Pretty much stuck with those two companies. I'm very happy with it. Got no problems. Yeah. What have you been drinking, Max? I've been drinking this one. It's empty. I know. I've been drinking it. Ah, oh, okay. Can you <laughs> say where it came from? <laughs> yeah, I've um, I got actually a kilo from uh, Darkwoods. Um, oh yeah, you've been drinking that Darkwoods. Oh stuff, yeah. Huh? 
So I, I, it's the um, Deer Hill, which is a blend, and yeah. it has Robusta in it. Love and it's oil. amazing. Yeah. It's actually really, really good. It's very easy to dial in. It makes amazing coffee, makes amazing cream on top. It's, it's, just, it's like picture-perfect coffee, and it comes out really nice. I really like it. It tastes just the right amount of um, um, chocolatiness. Mm-hmm. Uh, it tastes really good with, with milk as well. It makes an amazing cappuccino. That, that's brilliant. And it's cheap because it's got Robusta in it. So it's actually, uh, I think uh, on their website, a kilo is around 22 pounds. That's it's pretty very good. Tricky. Because you'll pay about thirty-two pounds yep. for from, from other places. But don't hold me on that because I do not remember the price. But it's about it's, I think it's yeah. around twenty something pounds. Yeah, which is very I think good. You'll see, you'll start seeing a lot more companies coming out with robusta blends because there's uh, um, obviously an arabica shortage. I think it makes sense, and it's uh, I mean, it's good to have you know it's good to have arabica and everything. But um, uh, do you really want to go only on Arabica? Is it is it actually the way forward? Can you blend it with uh, with Robusta? Does it make good coffee? Mm. Kind of does. Well, you know, at my cafe, we had a, a heavy Robusta blend um, because that's what people expected their coffee to taste like. Yes, but you if know? if you if you dilute it with a little Robusta, the Arabica will go longer. And you will probably put a little less strain on uh, on farmers as well and on uh, on farmlands. So well, I'm yeah, thinking of so, it as a as a greener option. Well, it it it's I'm not sure it's necessary. Well, it is greener in some respects because people are if they're and we're kind of going slightly off topic here. But when people are growing arabica, uh, if they are if they deplete their land, and this is where good agricultural practices become very important because generally farmers don't have either the tools, investment, equipment. Or knowledge um, to to apply those practices, and so what they do is when their land's pretty much depleted, is they just go further up the hill, and that causes more and more sort of deforestation and everything mm-hmm. else as they clear land for for planting new arabica. Um, whereas robusta is a much hardier plant and can be grown at lower altitudes and can be grown just even if it's you know, hotter, it doesn't need as much you know. You know, water and whatever else and it's, it's more dis- less disease prone which means you get higher yields um mm-hmm. essentially and, uh, <clears throat> and and so for many reasons robusta can be a uh, a more sustainable um plant to 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 go with but certainly even just from a taste point of view it's a um it, it adds us it adds a, a sort of a bit of a that coffee kick if, if you're not used to the to the, the subtleties of lighter roast and you have the equipment and expertise to bring out all the character of those lighter roasts. Mm-hmm. Um, probably not a bad place to start with is a Robusta blend. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, Max. Sorry. I was going <laughs> was to say something. Well, I've been drinking another coffee, but it's okay. <laughs> no, no, no. T- tell us about your coffee. Um, I've been actually drinking a, a, a coffee I got from Cordmull because I was on holiday in Cornwall. Um, it's uh, a called Heligian Blend, which was roasted a month ago, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> I found it on the Heligian Gardens, which is probably they've been brewing it in there. I mean, brewing it, sorry. They've been um, roasting it to sell on the, on the farm shop of the Heligian Gardens. It was pretty nice, actually. It's 100% uh, Arabica. It tastes good, relatively fruity. But it's a blend, so I have no idea what's in it. I didn't look it up. But it was it was nice, tiny tiny beans. So tiny I pre- beans. I presume it's African. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, is that right? The African have because it, it comes down to altitudes, doesn't it? A lot of it comes down. Yeah, to but the... I've noticed that normally the when the beans are very tiny, they tend to be from they tend to be Arabica from Africa because um, the the beans that we get from Central America they tend to be much bigger. Yeah, I don't know I if it's say. because of heat or temperature or height. I have no idea. No, I don't really know either. I mean, bigger beans are supposed to be sweeter, and, and but it depends on the variety and and you know the, the origin. Yeah, things. exactly. Yeah. So my my friend, let's wrap it up. What we'll do is I'll contact somebody else 
Uh, I'm going to find some good beans for Ben in the mm-hmm. US. Um, send him over some beans. Starbucks. Uh, yeah, you're going to get. <laughs> so, uh, well, well, congratulations. Uh, you've won a kilo of McDonald's coffee. Um, <laughs> Actually, McDonald's isn't bad. They, they use a wrap like a blend. And you, you, you also won a kilo of um, um, Nescafe Instant. Yeah, can you imagine? Can how you imagine? how much coffee can you make with one kilo of Nescafe? Lots of angry Is it a lifetime food? supply? No, it's not a lifetime supply. <laughs> I'm talking about angry messages. Yeah, I got banned on Instagram, just so you know, in case you try and message me. Uh, you you have? I'm sending messages. Well, I can, I'm, I'm still there. I got my, um, I got an old friend, like a childhood friend, uh, was uh, set to, wanted to quit a job. And uh, she was really into, she's a sweet girl. And she lived out in the countryside and she's sort of a, you know, vegan animal lover. And she decided that she wanted to get into selling uh, vintage clothes online. Actually not selling them. She was just, I think, I think she's going to sell the patterns. I don't really know. She's going to do something like that. But she just basically started, she has mm-hmm. tons of them. She has collections, a passion of hers. So she used to start showing them off and she made an Instagram account. This thing took off. It just rocketed, Max. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know, in no time at all, she had like over a thousand followers and, and she, lots of likes, engagement. Everyone loved it. And because I think it's very authentic. It wasn't just her like trying to flog something. She'd collected this stuff her whole life. And, and someone copied her account. Someone duplicated her account I uh, duplicated her name mm-hmm. and she called me up and she was in tears and then super upset. And I said, look, contact Instagram, point them to the account, you know, get people to file an abuse thing, whatever. So we did all of that. And then uh, Instagram said, well, they're not breaking any policies and just let it continue. And um, so then the person took off that. I don't know why they, they took off their photos or her photos. She had managed to copy. That's a she who had done this. And managed to copy all of this 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 lady's pictures. Mm-hmm. She took them down, put out some other pictures instead. But she actively started contacting all of this girl's followers and trying to get them to follow her instead. So when she contacted me, I said something uh, balanced and you know refrained, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. I said something along the lines of, "Get a fucking life, you loser." I think it was something like that um you know live your own life something like that. anyway something like that mm-hmm. uh and then i got banned <laughs> for one month i can't send messages to everyone's everyone <laughs> I got good job <laughs> I, uh, you know the thing is i think don't don't you have to be human aren't you allowed to be human i i mean i, I get it like i don't blame instagram i mean i kind of do because they should have they should not have allowed that account to be duplicated no not after all that work that girl had put in you know yeah but you know what when people are rich on instagram or famous on youtube mm-hmm. you're rich on instagram and famous on youtube right but but the, the point was is that she had contacted all of this girl's followers and was getting them to follow her and mm-hmm. people were confused as to who the real one was yeah but so she put all that work in and someone was stealing it i know but it's like i don't really want to say it it's like taking a taking a dive into in, into a, a cesspool and then complaining that it stinks Oh, yeah, but then having you, no, I totally agree with you. But then that, that's because you and I know that it stinks. This poor girl didn't. She, she's, she's very, you know, I think she's very kind of innocent. And, and she went out there and just, and this is why I hated it. This is why she made me upset. It's because you got this, this girl with who has a vegetable garden. Yeah, if it takes off, the, she can go on Etsy and places like that where she actually would be um, appreciated. appreciated and uh, um, protected. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but you know, anyway, so anyway, that's what it is. So, so for all those people, the people out there who are messaging me, I get messages every day from people. I can't respond. I can't even <laughs> like, I can't even like your message to me because <laughs> liking it might be, I don't might, I don't know. I can, I can write comments and I can post, but I can't message anybody for a month. So it's kind of like being, I, I feel like I got called up to the, the headmaster's office Given six with a cane <laughs> for a month, 
anyway, let's leave it there, Max. I'm going to talk to you next week. Uh, I am going to this week. I'm going to I'm going to um, finish the the carnival coffees that I've got, and then uh, I'll contact somebody else for in, hopefully in the UK for all this kit. We'll get it out there, and then next week we'll launch a a new giveaway. How does that sound? All right. All right, my friend. Did you mow the lawn? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Good man. All right. Now I have to see. wait for for everyone to pick it up. You didn't. You didn't pick it up. Well, no, I picked it up, but the the there's no drivers that come with the trunk to pick it up. Oh, we're out of petrol. No, we're out of drivers. We're out of drivers and petrol. Yeah. No, just okay. drivers. Okay. Yeah. All right, my friend. I'll talk to you next week. See you.